you. Good afternoon. My name is Sarah Grant, representing the city and county of Broomfield, and I am the chair of the Dr. Cog Transportation Advisory Committee. I call to order the September 25th, 2023 Dr. Cog TAC meeting at 1.30 p.m. This is an in-person live stream meeting format, and members of the public attending by Zoom have the ability to mute and unmute themselves and share their webcam. Those attending online, please be sure that your typed name reflects your first and last name and your representation. We ask that those attending to speak, by, speak, please use the raise hand button to ask a question or comment on an agenda item. If you have any technical questions, you can direct those to staff in the chat box. Again, please use the raise hand feature to ask any questions. A reminder, during the business agenda, only TAC members and alternates can speak or ask questions and members of the public may speak during public comment. And as a reminder to members and alternates here in person, please press the unmute button on the bottom of your mic stand and be sure that the light on your microphone is on and you're prepared to speak. Please speak clearly into the microphone so your voice will amplify. And please announce your name and representation when asking a question or making a comment for the record. Dr. Cog is sending out uh, the sign-in sheet. Please sign in. And at this time, TAC members and alternates in person will introduce themselves. Start with Ms. DeAndrea. Yes, good afternoon. Maria DeAndre with the City of Wheat Ridge. Hi, everyone. Christina Lane, Jefferson County. Kevin Ash, uh, Weld County, Town of Frederick. Brent Soderlin, um, City of Littleton. Carson Priest, TDM Non Motorized. Kent Mormon, City of Thornton. Jeff Dankenbring, representing Arapahoe County from the City of Centennial. Matt Callison, Rappo County, City of Aurora. Wally Wirt, uh, Freight Advisory. Good afternoon, Sean Poe, representing Adams County from Commerce City. Jeff Boyd, uh, representing Two Creeks Neighborhood Organization. Phil Greenwald, City of Longmont, Boulder County. Cam, Cam Kennedy, Dr. Cog staff. Sarah Grant, City and County of Brimfield. Doug Grex, Denver Regional Council of Government, subbing for Ron today. Janet Lundquist with uh, Adams County. I'm rough at this, guys. It's been about probably 10 years since I've come to a Dr. Cog TAC meeting. Bless Chris Chauvin for always, you know, stepping up in this space. <laughs> well, Jen Hill House, oh, there it goes. <laughs> I'm with the city and county of Denver. I'm with Dottie. Brian Metzger, CDOT, Division of Transit and Rail. Chris Gahan, um, CDOT, Division of Transportation Development. David Kretzinger, City of Denver, alternate and for Justin Bick. David Gasper, City and County of Denver. Bill Soroy, RTD. Tom Reif, uh, Town of Castle Rock and Douglas County. Jim Kotzer, representing Arapahoe County, alternate for Brian Weimer. Art Griffith with Douglas County. Uh, Justin Schmitz, representing Douglas County with uh, City of Lone Tree. Lauren Curtis, Dr. Cogstaff. Brody Ayers, Special Interest uh, Aviation. Rick Pilgrim, Environmental Special Interest. Wonderful, thank you. Again, there is a sign-in sheet going around, so please be sure that you are signing in. We'll now open up the meeting for public comment. Public comment is limited to three minutes. As a reminder that after the public comment period, only TAC members and alternates will partake in the discussion regarding each agenda item. If you join by Zoom, please raise your hand by pressing the raise hand button and we'll call on you to begin speaking. If you've joined by phone, please raise your virtual hand by pressing star nine and we'll call on you by your last three digits of your phone number. Staff will unmute you and you will need to unmute yourself by pressing star six on your phone. You'll have three minutes to speak after which you will be asked to wrap up your comment. As a reminder to everyone, after public comment, only TAC members and alternates can partake in the discussion. Do we have any public comment here in person or online on the Zoom call? Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. I don't see any hands raised in person or remote at this time.
At this time, we'll move on to the meeting summary. Um, for the August 28th TAC meeting summary, is there any discussion, corrections, or questions? Seeing none, the meeting summary will stand as presented. We will move on to our action items for today. We have four action items on the agenda, and the first one is item four in your agenda packet. The Transportation Improvement Program Policy Amendments. This is attachment B in your packet, and I'll hand it over to Josh Schwenk, Planner. Thank you, Madam Chair. Give me one second. All right, so I do have a number of amendments to our Transportation Improvement Program for your consideration today. Um, I'll run through each of these, but uh, the common theme here is money being transferred between projects, really just trying to uh, clean up how some projects are shown within the TIP. So uh, starting at the top, um, funding uh, for actually a resurfacing project along I-70 uh, was present in both the Region 1 surface treatment pool and RPP pool. So we're re we're removing that surface funding and RPP funding from both pools and programming that to the I-70 Chief Hosa to West Colfax project, it's listed fifth in your packet. Um, next, uh, we have our new Federal Boulevard BRT project. Um, CDOT had some funding for that within their arterial BRT pool, so we're taking funding from that pool and applying that towards the standalone Federal BRT project as well. We then have a number of projects related to the Colorado 119 corridor. Um, essentially, what's going on here is that there was some pre-existing funding from both CDOT, RTD listed in a couple places in the TIP. Um, we also had some funding awarded through our 22 to 25 TIP waitlist process, as well as calls one through four that all got put into separate projects. So we're just trying to clean that up, um, provide, uh, consolidate that into um, a single project to the extent possible. So taking funding from the Region 4 RPP pool um, and all the funding that's being removed is being uh, added to this 2020-081 project. So when I say it's being removed, it's not being removed from the TIP, it's being reprogrammed to that project. Uh, so funding's coming from the Region 4 RPP pool. Um, Funding and scope from the RTD 119 BRT enhancements project. Uh, the scope and funding that's remaining in that project is specifically for BRT stop improvements within the cities of Boulder and Longmont. Um, for the bikeway project, similar, um, we're removing construction funding and, sc and scope. Uh, the Boulder County design scope remains in that project as that is completed. Um, then we have the CDOT funded project. This is where all of that funding and scope is being consolidated. This is for the corridor between Boulder and Longmont. It includes roadway operational improvements, transit operational improvements, BRT elements like stations and park and ride, as well as construction of the bikeway. Um, so in addition to consolidating all of the funding from the other projects, this also includes 25 million in newly awarded raise funds as well as 1.6 million um, in TAP funds awarded through CDOT, as well as some additional state funding that was uh, earmarked in the 10-year plan. And then the final two projects are uh, for specific intersections. Those are also being rolled into the larger corridor project. So happy to take any questions about any of those. I realize it's a little bit of a confusing situation. Otherwise, I do have a proposed motion available for you. Thank you, Mr. Schwenk. Are there any questions or comments? Ms. Holtine. Thank you so much. Um, this is maybe a little bit adjacent to this, but when I was reviewing the packet for the meeting today, um, it you know came to my attention both through this and other you know, ways that, that a lot of these projects that have gone through the TIP are actually getting awarded federal funding and um, not a pertinent to voting on this, but I'm wondering if at some point we could take a look at some of these big, complicated, multimodal projects to look at all the funding sources 
and how that's flowing both through the you know four part tip process we just completed and some of the calls for funding that Dr. Cog's been supportive of its member government so that we can you know we have more complicated corridors on the horizon that are important in this region so I think it might be helpful for all of us to better understand um, how some of these corridors are, are getting funded and what's been successful for leveraging federal funds. Any more questions or comments for Mr. Schwenk on this agenda item? Proposed motion. Mr. Hydright. I'll move to recommend to the RTC the attached project amendments to the FY 2024 through 2027 uh, transportation Improvement Program. You're right, uh, Mr. Griffiths. I'll second the motion. Thank you. Um, we have a motion and a second. All in favor, say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion passes. Thank you, Mr. Schwenk. We'll move on to our next action item. This is uh, item number five in your packet, the Regional Transportation Operations and Technology Project Selection. This is attachment C in your packet. Greg McKinnon, Program Manager for Transportation Operations. Thank you, Madam Chair. There's this not a... Sorry, okay. Uh, yes, as said, uh, Greg McKinnon, Regional Transportation Operations Program Manager, uh, talking about the recommended uh, um, transportation operation and technology uh, um, funding uh, selections or recommendations for the set aside uh, is uh, Exhibit C in your packet. All right, so that's, uh, that bodes well, having the person talking about technology and they can't even use a computer. <laughs> uh, <laughs> all right, so uh, the Regional Transportation Operations Technology Strategic Plan uh, that was approved uh, earlier this year was the guidance for this, uh, this call for projects. The, uh, as a reminder, the priority initiatives for that strategic plan we're improving regional situational awareness, which was going on in the, in the uh, network at any given time, uh, regional performance monitoring, being able to, ma to monitor and manage trends, and improving uh, interagency and intermodal uh, co uh, operations coordination. So the uh, call for projects uh, was initiated uh, April 7th, and it was one of the two-stage uh, calls for projects. So we had a letter of interest form uh, where all the letters of interest were um, reviewed as a group with the stakeholders and the applicants uh, with the intention of uh, making sure that we have the best applications possible uh, being submitted July 7th. Yeah. <laughs>
Hello? Okay. Thank you, Lauren. Uh, how exciting. Um, hey, moving on. Uh, so uh, the uh, policies for uh, set-aside programs, which was also uh, approved uh, earlier this year, uh, in, uh, described how the uh, call for projects and evaluation projects, uh, uh, process is handled. So we assembled a, a review panel that individually evaluated and scored these uh, applications. And then the application scores and rankings were combined for a joint evaluation. And the review panel developed recommendations based on the scoring and, and a, uh, a value to the region. So here is the the list of projects in scoring order. Um, I think uh, the things we'll point out that we have a range of the, the weighted average score, which would be between zero and five. Uh, it ranges from 1.13 to 2.476, so almost 50%. Um, and then uh, we, what we did as an evaluation panel in my, um, User pointer is gone, so I'll just have to describe it. So we, we ranked them by the weighted average scores, but to make sure that there were no uh, outliers or kind of anomalies, we also did some scores and then some the individual rankings. So in that case, you know, looking for a lower number would be better than a higher number. And in each case, we were kind of seeing a break point uh, at, at about the, uh, the quarter way, uh, at the lower quarter of the list, uh, the last uh, five projects there. So what I'll do just here is go through quickly descriptions of the projects and uh, commenting on the, uh, the recommendations uh, going ahead. So the Aurora Traffic Management Center, it's going to be a uh, construction project to deploy a new traffic management center, uh, consolidating their uh, operations activities in one place and uh, coordinating with uh, public safety. Uh, and the comment is that the full allocation for these funds is dependent on uh, a, uh, an appropriate concept of operations document. And a concept of operations document is a description of its operations having high level functionality and the roles and responsibilities of all the uh, different units that combine together systems and staff alike. Uh, Louisville, uh, we had a upgraded traffic signal equipment and uh, the comment is just we need more uh, spec specificity in the location of the equipment uh, in the uh, IGA with CDOT when that comes to pass. Uh, Longmont smart, smart Signals to Schools is a deployment of intersection detection and traffic cameras at several intersections uh, across Longmont. The, the allocation was adjusted to um, uh, recognize that the, this program funds projects that are on the regional roadway system. So there are 24 intersections that are recommended for funding in that one. Jefferson County, uh, there is a procurement of uh, uh, intersection detection for 12 intersections, and that was recommended for full funding. CDOT Region 4, uh, looking for intersection detection and traffic cameras and some other equipment on uh, several intersections in US 287 and State Highway 7 that were transferred from Region 1 to Region 4, essentially. Um, and the allocation was, was adjusted, recommended adjusted here. Um, a lot of the equipment that was being requested already exists uh, and, and with no new functionality being added. So recommending the intersection um, detection that was requested, and five traffic cameras to fill in gaps in the system. Uh, Denver had V2X, uh, Vehicle to Everything Communications Devices, or Roadside Units Expansion. The construction project to expand the deployment of the devices on the road that are going to talk to connected, connected vehicles and other systems in the region. Uh, recommending full allocation, but contingent on the concept, uh, appropriate concept of operations, uh, as described before. Uh, and uh, the intent of the project is to be able to use this equipment to do automated traffic signal performance measures, ATSPM. And uh, so coordination with the regional ATSPM is going to be a requirement for this project as well. 
Uh, Boulder is expanding on their, the previous round, uh, upgrading signal equipment, uh, communications, and uh, traffic cameras, uh, and uh, recommending uh, full deployment or full uh, uh, allocation for that one. Uh, Aurora Communications Infrastructure Improvements is construction of, uh, of, of fiber connections to a, a fiber backbone that will interconnect uh, 31 signals across uh, Aurora. Littleton is expanding their project from the last round is a construction project to expand signal interconnect and uh, other equipment deployment. Uh, the recommendation is to allocate uh, or to adjust the allocation here as well. It's still full allocation, but they had requested funds in fiscal year 2027, and um, uh, recommendations didn't cover that year. So we're recommending that that, that request get moved and combined with uh, fiscal year 20. Uh, Thornton, uh, expanding from their uh, travel time monitoring uh, project the last round. Uh, procuring more travel time monitoring devices for 23 intersections, recommending full allocation there. Superior uh, uh, updating their traffic signal system, which is uh, shared with Louisville, and uh, some other um, minor equipment upgrades at uh, a couple of intersections. Aurora uh, traffic signal equipment, the, the improving uh, under. They're uninterruptible power supplies. I'm glad we called them UPS because I keep tripping over uninterruptible. Um, 42 of those and uh, intersection detection for 42 intersections. They're not independent. There's some overlap between them. I think it uh, adds up to 74 uh, different intersections. Um, then the, the lower quarter of the list, CU Denver, enhancing traffic analytics with LIDAR was the deployment of uh, LiDAR devices uh, uh, with the intent of uh, evaluating the accuracy and effectiveness against other technologies. And that one wasn't recommended for funding. Uh, Denver uh, uh, procuring a, a separate module for their existing traffic signal system uh, to allow traffic responsive. Traffic responsive uh, it selects different tra signal timing plans based on observed conditions. And uh, that one wasn't recommended for funding. RTD, a virtual guide application for access to ride pilot. Uh, that is a, uh, a procurement of um, and deployment of an app and software, as well as accompanying support services to provide a virtual guide for paratransit customers with visual hearing and cognitive dis difficulties over a period of four years. And that wasn't recommended. I'll cover Castle Rock and Denver the same. They're both dynamic message sign uh, uh, project deployments. They're construction projects to deploy dynamic message signs on, uh, well, it's on Denver or, or Castle Rock roadways and in Castle Rock on, on CDOT right away in one case uh, to uh, um, present um, messages regarding conditions on the, on the roadways and freeways. And then the final one, uh, and neither of those were recommended, and the final one, Denver's downtown count expansions. It was a request for 37 vehicle count stations across uh, Denver, and that wasn't recommended for funding. So this is the, uh, the recommendation itself. So it, the, covering those recommendations that we just went through, but then accommodating the requested funding dates in the application. So this is the programming. And it's showing the programming of the federal funds uh, and the associated committed uh, um, non-federal match uh, for the three fiscal years. So we had intended to go for the four-year program, but uh, the recommendations are just now covering three years. We'll have a call for projects a year earlier uh, than originally planned uh, to uh, uh, use the funds that weren't allocated here and the funds that are anticipated for the next. So hopefully made up some time from the technical uh, difficulties there. The recommendation is here, uh, and I am available for Thank you, Mr. McKinnon. Thank you for the thorough presentation. Do we have any questions or comments from the TAC? Mr. Rice? Yes, I, I didn't see you mention, is there going to be a waiting list for this uh, 
projects that were not. No. Oh. Any additional questions or comments? Mr. Rex. Thank you, Madam Chair, very much. I just want to follow up to that question from, from uh, Mr. Rife. So, Greg, what happens in the case then that there are return funds or whatever? Do we reprogram those or do we wait for the next, next call for projects? What's typically been the case? Yes, we, we typically uh, account for uh, project returns and they are put on hold until the, the next call for projects. The, uh, in the set-aside guidelines, the uh, expectation and intention was that we would be oversubscribed and with, uh, with such good projects that we couldn't turn any down and we uh, would have a waiting list. But in this case, uh, we are funding less than the funds that we had and carrying those funds over to the next call for projects. Any additional questions or comments from the tech? We have a motion. Mr. Hyde-Wright. A question for Oh, sure. Um, my apologies, Mr. Hyde-Wright. Uh, past cycle with the TIP, when we had more funds than projects, we did a supplemental call for projects. Is that being considered in this? Wait until the next call. Yeah, we're, we're planning to do the, the next call. So the, that will be for um, the spring of, of 2026 is when we'll initiate that call. Further questions, Mr. Rex? Well, I'll throw a motion out there, just get it on the table. Motion to approve. We have a motion from Mr. Rex. Uh, do we have a second? Mr. Greenwell? I'll second. Okay, all in favor, say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Abstentions. Motion passes unanimously. Thank you, Mr. McKinnon. The final action item on the agenda is item number six. This is the corridor set aside selection. This is attachment D in your packet. I'll hand it to Nora Kern, sub area and project planning project program manager from Dr. Cog. Thanks, Aaron. Um, so hello, everyone. Um, my name is Nora Kern, and I'm going to talk about our new quarter set aside and the uh, project selection recommendations coming to you. So just a reminder um, for folks about this new set aside pr uh, program. So this set aside is focused on advancing the projects and priorities that are outlined in the Regional Transportation Plan. It is focused specifically on the corridors that are named in that plan, um, and in particular, the corridors that have a need for additional planning um, to help them advance and kind of move towards implementation. So we started this program as a pilot, um, which is how we funded our Alameda Avenue study and South Boulder Road study, both of which are underway currently. Um, and the program is being formalized as a new set aside in the 2024 to 2027 transportation improvement program. 
the structure of the program will remain the same where Dr. Cog will retain the funds and serve as project manager, but uh, we'll be working in close partnership with the, the identified jurisdictions on each project. So there are $3 million available over the four-year tip. We are planning on splitting this into two two-year cycles. So what we'll be talking about today is the allocation of the first two years of funds, which is roughly $1.5 million. So just to uh, recap, too, we were looking at all the quarters in the Regional Transportation Plan, but we did kind of um, ex exclude um, some quarters in particular that we felt didn't meet the kind of align with the goals of the program. Those are quarters for which other agencies are leading studies or have recently led studies. Um, quarters where there's already projects in design or under construction, um, as well as limit, limited access freeways and roadways and trails and multi-use paths. So a uh, recap of the timeline and how we kind of got to where we are. Um, we did start by actually looking at all the corridors in the Regional Transportation Plan and kind of did an initial prioritization to kind of um, help everybody think about what corridors might be a good fit. Um, we got feedback from you all about that in, in June. Um, we had a letter of interest window that ran from July through August. Uh, during that time, we also had meetings with all of the jurisdictions that were considering in, um, submitting letters of interest. Um, we had a selection committee uh, make a recommendation in September, which I'll talk about in a moment. And then after today, we're hoping to kind of move forward with RTC and board approval um, next month. The goal then would be to kick off the first studies um, in next year, kind of depending on how things shake out, but probably um, starting around the second quarter. So um, we had uh, four, four letters of interest submitted for three different studies. Um, so the first was for Sheridan Boulevard. Um, in the Regional Transportation Plan, it's identified in the current staging period from, from 52nd to Hamden. It's identified for Vision Zero quarter improvements. It has kind of a medium equity score. And this one was submitted by both Denver and Lakewood. So uh, the estimated funding request is around a quarter of a million. Um, next one is the East Colfax Bus Rapid Transit Extension. So this is also in the current staging period and would extend the, the bus rapid transit that's already um, well advanced on Colfax, would extend it from I-225 to E-470. Um, it does include bus rapid transit and then the supporting safety and multimodal improvements that would go along with that. Um, this corridor did have the highest um, average equity index score of any of the corridors that were considered. Um, and the funding request would be around a million dollars to do essentially an alternative analysis um, for this project. And then our third um, quarter study was submitted also by Lakewood. Um, it's a, a West Colfax transit study looking at um, improving transit on Colfax from Sheridan to around Oak Street Station. Um, this one was a little tricky because there are several similar projects in the Regional Transportation Plan, but not this exact project. Um, so um, it was it didn't quite align, um, and the, it did have a relatively small funding request of thirty-five to fifty thousand. So, like I said, we did have a selection committee, which included Dr. Cog staff, staff from RTD and CDOT regions one and four, um, and all the committee members reviewed those. Um, four letters of interest in the three corridors, looking at the evaluation criteria you can see. Um, and you can see the ultimate scores that kind of the combined total scores for each of the three corridors. Sheridan scored the highest, followed by the East Colfax Bus Rapid Transit Extension, followed by the West Colfax Transit Study. So the selection committee recommended funding um, the first two, the Sheridan Boulevard Vision Zero Corridor Study and the East Colfax BRT Extension Study. Um, West Colfax was not recommended at this time, uh, mostly because it didn't exactly align with the Regional Transportation Plan. So um, if uh, there wasn't, well, I hit something, sorry. If there was an update to the Regional Transportation Plan, that one could be considered down the road. And then uh, because this is a four-year set aside, we'll allocate funds as needed for the first two years and save any additional funds for the, the final two years of the set aside. And the, there'll be a second call for projects for that um, two-year cycle in the summer of 2025. So with that, I don't know if there's any questions. And if not, I can bring up the motion. Thank you, Ms. Kern. Thank you for walking us through that. 
Uh, do we have any questions for Ms. Kern? Any comments? This whole team. Thanks. I just want to say this is such a great project that Dr. Cog is undertaking. Um, I mean, it's kind of fun to be awarding a second round as the first round is getting started. So I'm just really excited to see these, these community-based project planning um, uh, initiatives moving forward and excited. I know that good things come from that. So I just want to, you know, salute your work and Dr. Cog's leadership with that. Thanks. Yeah, we're very excited to kind of continue the program. questions or comments? Mr. Mormon. I'd like to move the item. Mr. Mormon has made a motion as proposed in the Dr. Cock agenda. A second? I'd like to second. Ms. Holteen, second. Thank you. Uh, we have a motion and a second. All in favor? Or say, uh, all in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any abstentions? Motion passes unanimously. Thank you very much, Ms. Kern, and really appreciate Dr. Cog's work on this new program. Don't go anywhere because you have the next <laughs> agenda item. Um, we will move on to informational briefings. So the remainder of the agenda, there are no further action items. This is an informational briefing on the statewide transit planning update, and Ms. Nora Kern uh, will give this update. Great. So my job on this one is pretty easy. I'm going to introduce Brian Metzger from the Colorado Department of Transportation Division of Transit and Rail to provide an update on their organizational scope of work, an update on the up kind of new staff roles and staffing structure, and then on the bus staying expansion plan and the transit plan updates and vision. So Brian, I'll turn it over to you. All right. Uh, thanks, y'all. Um, as Nora mentioned, my name is Brian Metzger. I'm the Assistant Director of Planning and Operations at DTR uh, for uh, our Department of Transportation. Uh, Dr. Cog asked me to come here today and give some updates on what we got what we got cooking uh, from a planning standpoint, as well as some just some different changes and stuff that uh, we're trying to let everybody know what's going on. So let's jump into it. So, all right, so quick agenda, uh, hopefully I'll get you in and out from my standpoint anyways, but uh, first thing I want to touch on is our DTR organization, just some changes and things we got going on there. Um, we're going to talk a little bit about our bus staying expansion plan that we just wrapped up here at the middle of, or the end of August, as well as just some future plan that we got coming up just to keep you all aware of in the loop of what's, what's going on with, with things. Uh, so first thing is our organization, DTR organization. As most of you know, or if you don't know, um, we've had quite a bit of changes over the last handful of years now, uh, and we are getting quite large. We're, we're growing quite a bit, as you can tell from our, um, from our organization. Uh, part of this organizational chart is OIM. OIM is kind of on the right-hand side, uh, so they're doing a lot of, with the electrifications, uh, mobility services, and, and micro-mobility services on that side. On the left-hand side of, of, of this big, huge chart is, is DTR. Um, all the way to the left, and apologize for the small print. Uh, like I said, we're just getting quite large. Um, is David Singer does all our front range passenger rail stuff, um, so there, he's he's managing all that. Uh, me, I'm in the middle there with the with the bigger group, I guess now. <laughs> uh, but uh, planning operations. So originally, I came into DTR about a year and a half ago and, and did all the planning and delivery aspects. So any of our mobility hubs, trans centers, things like that, uh, my unit oversaw as well as the planning of all those things, 10 year plan projects, those kinds of things. Um, we now recently just brought the operate the bus operations, so bus tank is uh, now underneath me as well. Um, just it made sense, right, from all the different studies and some of the planning that you're going to see here in a little bit. It makes sense, right, when we're building the hub. It's nice to know bus thing operations to know when they can go there, when they can when they can start operating and do their thing from from that standpoint. So, um, kind of my my major role there. Uh, Jan Rowe, kind of in the middle there, uh, he's heading up our programs uh, unit where they've actually taken on a lot of our administration work as well. 
uh, before there was four or five of us. And so now, and one of those was an administration group. So Jan's taking that on. So he's really, to make it real simple or how I try to explain it to people, Jan's a lot more of our grants and our FTA work on that side, whereas I'm just more state funds and, and uh, free on my end. But uh, we do have some connections. We do have some crossover uh, from different getting some of the contracts and stuff going, but uh, his, his unit's uh, working on a lot of a lot of those different things there. So a uh, bunch of changes. Um, and then all the way up, up top, uh, we have Paul DeRocher, who comes from us from RTD. He started, I think, right at the beginning of August or the end of, end of July. I can't remember what day it was. But anyways, he's been in there for about a month, drinking from the fire hose uh, with all the things we got going on and everything we got going on with DTR. But uh, um, feel free to reach out to him. Uh, welcome him. Uh, he's, he's, doing a, he's doing a fantastic job so far. Uh, so the first thing I want to talk on from a planning standpoint is our bus tank expansion plan. Most of you know, we got a, we got a uh, Senate Bill 180 came to us a couple years back um, and with this planned expansion, right? How are we going to increase service? How are we going to increase round trips? All those kind of things like that. So in a post-COVID world, we went, we went out and looked at this thing. What, it, what can this thing look like? So really the purpose of our bus tank uh, service plan, like, and like I said, we wrapped this thing up at the end of August, was to really evaluate the overall market potential. Do we have the demand? Do we have the want, the need the, to expand the way we had originally thought it was, right? A lot of this planning was done either pre or kind of during COVID, so we didn't really know. So we went back out and looked at all those different things. Um, we wanted to ensure the proposed service met the anticipated demand. Again, are we going to have this increased demand in the future if we continue to buy buses, continue to add in hubs and, and stops and times and everything else? Really, this plan really helped us all ultimately develop those planning level rider projections. So we used um, some of Marissa's group, or DTD, um, and the really smart people to look at all the, the demand modeling and everything else and say, hey, yeah, we really have some, some really good demand here in this thinking band. Uh, the study helped us also develop some schedules and timetables, so kind of tweak some of the, the times that we are doing some things, and so look at that, so some of those changes. Fleet requirement and operating cost. Obviously, just looking in the future, how much are we going to spend, how much do we need to, how much, how much space do I need to have and for how many buses and things like that. Uh, so just, I put a little timetable there at the right-hand or bottom right-hand corner of this thing and really kind of how we looked at this, this whole study. Uh, we started back in September of uh, last year. We just look at our existing conditions like you'd start any other study, start with what you got. So all the different plans, all the different things that we have going on um, towards Christmas and the beginning of, of last year, or this year, I'm sorry, uh, we got into that tra travel market analysis, did a couple of different surveys, some different things like that, obviously did all of our modeling and things along that, those lines. And then, like I said, we, we just produced the recommendations and our next steps um, here about a month or so ago uh, at the final final documentation um, and everything put together. So next really big steps for this thing is really start planning this thing out. What can we do? When can we do it? Uh, we know we have some buses on order. We know we have, uh, we're trying to hire more operators and things like that. So what's that plan moving forward? So over the next couple of months, we're really going to start developing what that schedule looks like for us. Uh, so, so some future plans. So these are some bigger pictures, uh, our bigger picture look at what we got coming up over the next, shoot, probably year and a half or so especially with our long range planning, but I'll kind of, I'll go a little bit off of, uh, off the bullets a little bit, but here obviously just talked about the bus tank expansion plan. Um, the next really big thing that we're going to kick off here, hopefully next month or so is our inner city and regional bus plan. That's really going to be our network planning, right? Where are all the, where are all the corridors? What are all the things that we want to have bus or buses go to? Obviously our bus tank expansion plan or bus tank is just I-70 and I-25 for the most part. So we have a big, huge uh, operation as well from our Outrider, or what we call our Outrider program, where we go to all these different corridors. We go from Crested Butte to Denver. We go to all these different areas. Let's look at that continuing to grow. What does that look like to continue to grow? We currently have, I think, 90 stops, I think it is. We want to get to a point of like 140 stops before this thing is done, um, and even more if, if that comes to it. Talking with some agencies, talking with some areas, they definitely there's some definitely some need and some corridors to take this kind of service to. But really that network, that inner city regional bus plan is gonna help us develop that. What does that look like? What do we need from funding and, and things like that? Uh, we'll roll up into the, this will all roll up into our long range transit plan. So we're gonna work really, really closely with DTD on that. Um, just from a resource standpoint, from just an experience standpoint, um, as you tell from the org chart, we're all pretty new to this, to this game. So use them, utilize them, but really help. Hopefully we can help do some better engagements and some things like that where we're not duplicating efforts from a transit side and a transportation side. So 
Um, but again, our transit plan is just what our transit plans always is, right? It's all it's all these plans, it's all these projects, it's what our priorities and those kinds of things. So we'll really roll all that stuff together. We really don't not plan to start that until May of 2024. So I've already been in conversations with Marissa and her team um, to start kind of what that process is going to look like, what that schedule is going to look like. So more to come, hopefully, the next couple months with, with both of those things. Um, some other things that would be underneath there is just our public transit and human services transit plans. Those will all roll up into that, um, as well as the passenger rail plan, which I think the passenger rail plan, they're planning to wrap that thing up by the end of this year, I believe, talking with David Singer on that. Um, so that was it. Quick, easy, dirt, nothing, nothing too complicated there, but uh, any questions from anybody? Thank you, Mr. Metzger. Uh, any questions from the TAC? Mr. McAllison. Yes, thank you, Chair. Uh, Brian, uh, could you share with us your thoughts on, you mentioned I-70 and I-25, but on I-70 East specifically, uh, that is a growing market share for logistics distribution manufacturing centers, and, and would, uh, we'd be interested, a lot of stakeholders out there are interested in how we uh, address those uh, those transit needs moving yep. forward. So uh, so uh, to that point, that, there's nothing in our plan right now that has anything going out east, but that's not to say with some of the new planning coming up, you're not the first person to hey, what are we going to do out east? How can we do that? Where, where are we going to stop? All those good things like that. So hopefully with this, some of these new plans, I already have it in the scope for these two new city and regional plan and long range. Identify that and what that looks like going out east. We'd be happy to engage with you as, as you develop those, those scopes and, and have those uh, – those collaboration sessions. Yeah. yeah, there's some there's some big corridors we want to kind of take a look at and say what does what does this look like? Thank you, Mr. Mormon. You mentioned uh, best thing. It, does that also include the best thing outrider? And I guess where I see it is, for instance, Colorado Seven goes in and out of the RTD district. A lot of sense for me to my standpoint that CDOT would be looking at that between Brighton and Boulder. Yeah. Asking if that's Nebby. 100%. So, yeah, so, again, both in, both with our inner city region plan and long-range plan, we're going to look at our outrider program. Actually, I think our outrider program is could potentially be bigger just because of and all those things, right? That's going to be the fingers to come into our, our main lines, the I-70s and the end of the world. So definitely going to be part of this thing. Um, we're already working right now. We already have um, – Started with design on all the current stops as well as all of our future stops to bring those all up to ADA compliance, land use contract, all those different things that we need to do there. Um, so hopefully next year or so we can start some construction and get those all up to snuff and continue to how we're going to expand. Um, there was, I think, there was a plan that was done before I came in that identified a whole bunch of gaps for our outrider program. How do we connect some of these different things? And so we're going to look at, I want to look at the whole entire state with this thing. Hill. So can you talk about, this is exciting, thank you for bringing this to us, um, can you talk a little bit about how you prioritize the expansion and if you're also looking at capital improvements alongside your service such as, you know, bus only lanes or TSP, bus is moving. And the last question I had is, are you coordinating with the jurisdictions on kind of first and final mile so once someone gets to their location they can move about and hike or whatever they are wanting to do? Um, how, how do we prioritize uh, from, a, from a funding standpoint? It's two different sets of funding, right? With our Senate bill funding and different things like that, we have that kind of set aside for all of our operations with bus tank and outrider and different things of an F, which funds a lot of our outrider stuff as well. Um, so that's a different group. So they kind of work on, on that, right? Our bus tank operations um, from all the, the different capital improvements. That's a whole other group, right? I have a whole other uh, set of folks um, actually going to be up by another month or two, hope be up by four or five people on that side, just helping to deliver projects and make sure that those things are going. Prioritize the same, I guess, um, because I, I don't, I'm not sure what you're, what you're, uh, what you're looking for. Uh, yeah, just look into, you know, so there's a big plan, you'll have a lot of strategy, yeah. and then the criteria of how you'll start to take that down. So understanding, yeah. like, some funding, yep. um, but, yeah, I guess, and I could follow the plan, too, but I would imagine you'll have to set some 
type of prioritization of how you move across the region of what you're building first? Yeah, yeah. so the biggest thing from us, uh, from, a, from a building standpoint, from a capital standpoint, is our 10-year plan. I already, already prioritized work with DTD and the local agencies and prioritized that out. I think we're going to do some sort of uh, updates here uh, in the next couple of months. Um, but again, continue to update that. Um, I'm actually developing a process for that as well as internally to have that backlog of projects. Like, hey, if we get an extra money here, like here's here's what goes up first and here's what goes up second and those types of things. At least have that documented so everybody knows exactly how that works because it looks a little bit different from the regional standpoint versus a local transit agency. We have to be equitable to all those partners. We have 60 plus agencies funding at some level. We have to be really uh, cautious or careful with not just giving it all the regions and, and, and or, or vice versa. And so we're very uh, diligent with that and kind of have that process documented. Um, like I said, from, from an operations standpoint, uh, we need to sit down and look at this expansion and say, okay, what is our first set of things that we need to do, right? Well, you've heard some of the different uh, just shortages and, and things like that that we've seen over the last couple months, like really over the last year. I mean, everybody's having problems with driver shortages and procurement. And so we have to go back to kind of the drawing board and say, Here, here's what we're going to do first. Here's what we're going to do really, really well first. Here's what we're going to do really, really well second. So hopefully the next, um, I work, met with our operator for about three hours last week and said, okay, here's, here's what we've got to do. We're putting that schedule together to prioritize uh, what's going on there um, and make sure that we're doing everything correctly. Um, have certain limitations some of the funding that we do have available to us by certain fiscal years and certain calendar years we have to have certain spent and budgeted and encumbered so just making sure that we're getting all that stuff done uh in, in the in the right amount of time i think you had a third question i don't know if yeah. i answer, i don't know if i answered you all well there. yeah just um under saying will you um wrap around some of the capital improvement are you looking at some of the capital improvements such as bus only lanes tsp that will allow for the buses to move more efficiently and then coordinating with the jurisdictions on first and final mile. So when oh, yeah. people get there, they're yeah, able well, to move about. That's right, the first and final mile. Yes, ma'am. Yes. So, yeah, yeah. We're on, I'm on, or my team or somebody's on uh, on pretty much every one of those projects. I know Jessica's got a bunch in Region 1 lanes and BRTs and uh, on the BRT, Colfax, and, and different things. Uh, just to make sure we're trying to, how do we integrate into all those things? Uh, not even, not only that, but just looking at I-70, you know, you have the, um, the, the UV lanes going on I-70. Well, we can't put a bus on there because they're too skinny. Well, okay, well, do we ramp up some Pegasus buses to make sure we're running a little bit better there? Um, part of the intercity and regional plan, even before that, I, I do want to get with all the different agencies across all those corridors and say, what are your times? Because as we start shifting times, right? If we come, if we leave Union Station at 7 a.m. or 7:30, that's going to make a different connecting at Frisco or Vail or any of those other places. So, how do we make sure we're all in alignment? Um, I actually just talked to a guy this morning, learning about from a marketing standpoint. How do we go out and continue to market this? Make sure everybody knows what those changes are. Um, how do we make those changes with those agencies, right? That are make it continue to make it efficient. Um, one of the things we're talking about doing is not taking every trip west to Grand Junction, maybe we stop some in Glenwood Springs, ridership depart by Glenwood Springs, they run two or three to, to Grand Junction, or maybe we do a split route. And so I won't look at it all. Like I said, it, it, we're, we're gonna come back to the drawing board. Stuff. But the first and last mile, um, actually one of the other ladies in OIM, uh, with, from a micro mobility standpoint and, and different things, uh, she's adding in scope for the long range plan and inner city those things and what we can do, right? Can we set up a, a, a small bus service or help fund a uh, smaller bus service help with some of those smiles? What can we do uh, talking with the bike and ped folks um, and all the different um, to kind of say, hey, help with this. Can we give a little bit of money? Here? So again, the world is our, I keep telling everybody the world is our oyster right now. It's really cool stuff. It's really, it's really neat to kind of see it really blow up the way it is. It's gone. And I just wanted to add on that um, when we delivered the 2045 statewide plan, we did it in tandem with statewide transit plan, which Brian mentioned. So we plan to have the same model for when we when we develop our 2050 plan. But wanted to add that one of the exciting things that we're going to do is we're going to deliver an active transportation plan in tandem with that too. So I think that will go 
delivering um, some of those connections and really make sure we have a complete um, network at the end of the day. Directs. Thank you, Madam Chair. And Brian, thank you, sir, for, for coming by today and, and uh, speaking to us. Um, I had a question related to snow staying. Um, as we know, the snow's going to be flying here soon, hopefully not too soon. I'm ready for the <laughs> golf season to be over yet. <laughs> but, um, uh, and, and I know there's pretty strong demand for, for that service, and I was just curious if there's any thought to uh, increasing the frequency of that as well. Uh, we already got um, – we haven't talked frequency yet. We just got four out of the five shorts that did it last year have already signed up or said they're willing to do it. Um, so we gave everybody the deadline of October 1st. So we got a couple more days to kind of get the documentation if they want to do it or not do it. Um, but from there, then, yeah, we'll, so we'll look at uh, frequency and how often we're going to run that. But, yeah, we, we've already talked to the operator. They said they can handle that from an operation standpoint. Actually, a lot of their, their their special coaches do a lot of that driving for those things, so it's uh, it's already on our plate, and we already have it on. Yeah, that's awesome. I've heard nothing but good things, so thank you for that service. The second question I had is somewhat related. I've I've um, I've heard at least there have been conversations about extending the ski tra the ski train, and I know that you know, this is not a service that you all provide. I've heard conversations about it going uh, up the steamboat. Do you, do you know anything about that at all? I don't. Okay, that's just curious. Thank you. Mr. Hydright. Thanks, Brian. Um, I was wondering, is the busting expansion plan on DTR's website anywhere? It's not. And you know what? You're not the first person to ask me. I just haven't put it up yet. I have a question along those lines. Um, so, uh, when when will that be posted, and uh, will local agencies be able to provide some input, or who should they contact to review that and provide input? Uh, when it will go up, uh, put it up, and then uh, <laughs> um, and then uh, yes, just contact me. I'll put my name on it, or I'll have the IT people to put me. Any additional questions or comments? Mr. Ayers. Thank you. Just uh, from my perspective, right, aviation special interest, please remember the airports, right, uh, as you bring into your planning, uh, talk to the airports in that region. It's part of the grant assurances for each airport to work with any state of buses and provide access to airports. So. But one, of the, uh, one of our outrider routes, we're actually looking to stop or to down to DIA um, here shortly just to try it out. Um, obviously, don't want to compete. Uh, look and make sure we're issues there with you know, revenues and everything else happening. So, but yeah, and then I, like I said, the inner city region plan have that to look at as well. That potentially looks like to have, instead of everybody coming to Union Station, maybe we start there and then they go to Park or wherever else. Those well, definitely something to work on. Any further questions? I have uh, one final question. Um, I did hear on the news recently that Bustang was having some uh, trouble with some operator shortages, and that's um, not unique to uh, the Bustang services or other services in our region or nation. Um, does this long-range plan take into account um, how CDOT will maintain and sustain operators into the future? Yes. Yeah. So, uh, like I said, I mentioned uh, last week we had about a two, three-hour conversation with our operator put together a whole plan of how, one, how they're going to recruit more, how they're going to keep their bench up, too, and then, um, as well as, like I said, for the expansion plan and the schedule that I kind of mentioned over the next couple of months, just kind of looking at those things, right? Do we split some routes? Do we change some times up? Will that help with, with keeping some of our operators, right? If they're not having to drive to Grand Junction in the same well every single night, that help with that recruitment and keeping people? Or did they had, honestly, they had a perfect storm of, People seizures, somebody's it's not like it was just a perfect storm of like they went to bed Saturday and on Sunday they woke up and had didn't have enough fiber. Like it was, just, they increased their rates already um, to uh, drivers, and so they have already seen a bigger recruiting class year over year 
or this time last year than what they have, or what than what. We're seeing a bigger recruiting class now than what they did this time last. Year. Extra trainer, so they're going to have full-time trainers, which means it takes six weeks for them to train somebody to recruit and then train a. Having multiple trainers now, they can have four people being trained in multiple hours. They have to have 40 or 60 hours. Drive those buses, um, and then, like I said, they have a whole. Uh, we have a whole plan by middle to end of October. They plan and then some, and then, like I said, then we're going to look at routes and times and everything. Can we cut? Right, there are some routes that just aren't cutting the mustard. Let's let's get rid of that. Give those drivers and those buses back to the other route. We're correcting it. Thank you. I'm glad you're looking short term and long term oh, yeah. at that. Any final question or comments? Thank you, Mr. Metzger. Thank you. Really exciting to see this expansion of transit in our state. Thank you. Okay, so that concludes our informational briefings. Um, we do have an informational item in our packet. Strengthening Mobility and Revolutionizing Transportation and Reconnecting Communities and Neighborhoods Grants Informational Forms. Um, typically, informational items are um, for your review on your own time, but uh, we thought it'd be great to um, take a quick look at this. And Ms. Nora Kern, Sub-Area and Project Planning Program Manager, will walk us through this. Great. Thank you, Chair. Um, so like we just heard, as with the other discretionary, discretionary federal grant programs, we've been asking everyone to fill out a form and let us know if they're thinking of applying. And the purpose is really just to make sure that everyone in the region is aware of what everyone else is doing and that we can kind of coordinate with our, our neighbors and partners. So the two grants um, that were the focus of this latest um, round are the Reconnecting um, Communities and Neighborhoods Grant and the Strengthening Mobility and Revolutionizing um, Transportation Smart Grant. Um, I think both are due, I think one the Reconnecting Communities is due this week and SMART is due, um, I think, uh, at early October, so coming up on it. Um, so we did have, uh, for the two grants, we had 18 responses from 10 different agencies, and those are all included in your packet. Um, but I think we did have a couple folks who wanted to make a note, and then we can also open up for questions if people had questions about any of them. So um, did, I think maybe Commerce City, Sean, did you have something to note about yours? Or Yeah, thank you for that. Um, we had originally submitted two uh, forms uh, to, for submittals, and we're only going to be submit the one for the East 72nd Rail State. Great. And then I think there was one note from Wheat Ridge. Is someone here who could talk about that? Okay. I'm I'm not certain what the issue was. Okay. Well, um, Jessica. Okay. <laughs> I don't know about that one, but I wanted to just note, and I don't know where we submitted notes, but we, uh, CDOT, decided not to pursue the Colorado Boulevard reconnecting and enhancing communities, connecting Colorado Boulevard safe sidewalks and complete streets this round. So just wanted to note that that one is in here, but it will not be going forward. Great. Are there any other notes or questions about any of the, the proposals? Seeing none, best of luck to everybody, and um, let us know if you get awarded. We'll all be keeping track, but <laughs> let us know if you get, get awarded funds. Thank you, Ms. Kern, and thank you, Dr. Cog, for having this as a standing agenda item as there's so many funding opportunities available and bringing transparency to um, the uh, projects that may be submitted in our region. Uh, we will conclude with our administrative items. Uh, item number nine is member co uh, comments or other matters. Um, we'll start with the Advanced Mobility Partnership Working Group update. Um, Mr. Priest, do we have an update? Thank you, Madam Chair. A very short one. The AMP Working Group met earlier this month where we heard from Dr. Cog's staff regarding two items that we discussed here today, smart grant program opportunities and about the selected RTO&T 
uh, projects and from their set aside. We also heard an update from CDOT staff regarding their connected vehicle program. Uh, that's it, Madam Chair. Thank you, Mr. Priest. Are there any other uh, member comments or other matters to address? I am seeing none, and so we will move on to adjournment. Um, if you did not sign in, please check in at the sign-in table um, or with Dr. Cox staff to make sure that you are recorded uh, with your participation today. Our next TAC meeting will be October 23rd, 2023, and we are now adjourned at 2.36. Thank you.